A very good day to you. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. It's Monday, January 30th. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run. The former federal courthouse on South Street in Middletown that the city purchased many years ago has finally received approval from Albany to remodel and expand to conform to state standards. Mayor Joseph DeStefano says work should begin on the building in the months ahead. This is a major project for the city that would be phase one of uh, meeting the state mandate of having a second court because the court system now does regional courts and Middletown is one of the regional courts. And uh, we would then, um, phase two would be the conversion of the existing court into a combination of expansion of both police services and um, some city hall offices being relocated into that building. Bids for the construction work on the new courthouse will be opened in one week. The suspension of Newburgh Free Academy teachers with pay and their reinstatement following their social media comments last year is being condemned by the president of the Newburgh Holland Falls NAACP. The three women and one man posted remarks viewed as inappropriate after a teacher took a photo of a braid found on the floor belonging to an African-American girl and suggesting it was a snake. The teachers were suspended with pay by the school board and recently allowed to return to the classroom with only a letter placed in their personnel files. NAACP President Ray Harvey chastised the school board over their actions. When you get a, a, a teacher who, who turned down a child's self-esteem and the only thing she gets is a suspension with pay, to me, you sending the wrong message to our kids. And I don't care whose kid it is or what color the kid is, but this just happened to be a young African-American young lady. Harvey says this was an attack on the way an African-American wears her hair. You shouldn't be looking at someone's hair. You should be looking at trying to get them to be the best student they can be, he said. The Sullivan County Land Bank is applying to the state for $2 million in grants to rehabilitate three properties on Monticello's Broadway. Executive Director Freda Eisenberg says they would hope to restore those buildings and return them to the tax rolls through sales. The Key Bank building is part of an application um, that the county is, uh, will be submitting to the Restore New York program uh, to, to get funding for um, that redevelopment. We're also including in that package uh, the strong building on the same bank is, uh, block as Key Bank and the Broadway Theater at the other end of Broadway. Rupco has plans to purchase the Key Bank building and lease it to a new African American library. More news right after this. Find over 100 retailers allowing you to spend hours shopping safely at the Galleria at Crystal Run. Enjoy the big brands and the diverse selection of family-owned stores all in one location. The Galleria at Crystal Run offers dining options for everyone with Fuji 110 Grill, Allen's Mediterranean Grill, and Peru Cuisine. Discover the Mid-Hudson Valley's premier shopping, dining, and entertainment destination the Galleria at Crystal Run. For more information, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or visit GalleriaCrystalRun.com. The annexation of some 122 acres of land from the town of Deer Park into the city of Port Jervis has been approved, Mayor Kelly Decker says. The two parcels will be officially taken over by the city in a matter of weeks. This past fall, Orange County accepted the map changes, and as of March 1st this year, nearly 104 acres of light industrial land at the Old Dix Concrete and nearly 18 acres of commercial retail space near the I-84 interchange officially moves into the city limits. This is the first known annexation into the city since its inception in 1907. Decker says there's already interest in revitalizing the property to create new jobs and businesses. It remains a mystery how a sterling silver trumpet crafted for Port Jervis Engine Company No. 2 in 1857, the company's founding year, wound up in Massachusetts. In fact, current members were unaware of its existence until it was found on eBay. It's now back home where it was presented 
by H. H. Barnum in April 1857. Firefighter Megan Metzger told Mid-Hudson News. It will be on display at the museum. We are actually planning as a company to use it in upcoming parades, you know, because obviously Port Jervis does have one of the longest running firemen's parades in the whole country. Um, you know, when you think about it, it's older than the Civil War. The Civil War started in, what, 1864? This was given to us by the first mayor in 1857. The trumpet was. H.H. Oh, wow. H. Farnham. Captain Tyler Kowinski said the town came together to raise the funds to buy it from an antique shop and bring it back home. A two-car crash on Interstate 84 in the town of Wallkill yesterday afternoon claimed one life, state police said. The accident occurred around 2.30 p.m. in the westbound lanes. One person was pronounced dead at the scene, two others injured. Meanwhile, a late Saturday night accident between a Toyota Avalon and a tractor trailer on the thruway in the town of New Pauls claimed the life of 63-year-old Darlene Hallwick of Hurley, the sole occupant of the car. I'm Hank Gross. MidHudsonNews.com. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run.